should Biden run for president in 2024? Absolutely. Look, all of those pundits and journalists and political operatives who are saying Biden should drop out have absolutely no track record in predicting elections. Yet they claim to know what the Democrats should be doing to win this election. And once again, they're trapped into the polls. And remember, all those same so-called experts following the polls told us Hillary Clinton couldn't lose. Even the eminent polling consortium of, Poli of Princeton University, headed by the great Professor Sam Wang, assured us Hillary Clinton had a 99% chance of winning, according to the polls. And Professor Wang said he'd eat a bug on national television if he was wrong, and he did so. We know the alternatives to the polls and the pundits is the keys to the White House. But before I get to the keys, I want to make some broad observations. Some of you may have heard my analysis of America's political situation today. Republicans have no principles. Democrats have no spine. Republicans only care about grabbing and holding power. They have united behind a candidate who's based his campaign entirely on the most outrageous of lies. He's trying to con and gaslight his way into the presidency and who's promised to be a dictator on day one. And in the history of the world, every dictator on day one has been a dictator as long as they can hold on to power. Donald Trump entire debate performance was one lie after another. The fact checkers documented some 30 or more lies. That's one lie for every 20 to 30 seconds. On the other hand, yes, Biden had a deficient and faltering performance, but the media is deeply complicit in Donald Trump's reelection. They have focused almost entirely on Biden's faltering performance. Okay, that's legitimate, but they have ignored Donald Trump's vastly worse substantive performance based on lies and a promise to be an authoritarian. That is vastly more of an existential threat to our republic than anything that Joe Biden represents. And yet the media has almost entirely ignored that threat. There's an old saying, it's not just the evil people who wreak havoc on this world. It is the good people who don't do enough to stop them. Not only is the media not doing enough to stop Donald Trump, they are playing right into his hands, and that is absolutely shameful. Now, let's analyze the situation with respect to Biden dropping out according to the keys, not the pundits and the polls as the 13 keys to the White House taps into the structure of how elections really work as votes up or down on the strength and performance of the White House party. If six or more of the keys go against the White House party, we have an earthquake. They're predicted losers. Fewer than six, they're predicted winners. So right now, Biden checks off the incumbency key and the contest key, because he was unchallenged, essentially, for his renomination. That means six of the remaining 11 keys would have to fall to count him out. On the other hand, if Biden simply steps down and you have a big brawl for who to succeed him, because there's no consensus choice, it's all over the map, the Democrats lose both of those keys, and only four more keys would have to fall to predict Biden's defeat. That's why Biden should stay in. Now, I do have a plan B. It is possible. I don't have any inside information, but there's tremendous pressure for Biden to step aside. If that pressure forces him to step aside, here's what he should do. He should resign the presidency for the good of the country. That would be greatly applauded by the American people. Kamala Harris, much younger, no issue about her mental sharpness, would become president. That would check off the incumbency key, and Biden would then release all his delegates to support 
Harris at the convention to avoid an internal party fight, and that would also check off the contest key. That is a much preferable plan B if, in fact, the spineless Democrats force Biden out of this race.